with that big fence and the barbed wire on top of it? Yeah. Good question. Do we just lose those balls? Well, how big is the fence in the background? Is that I think that was a... Okay, so can our dugout... Now, the dugout can handle the stuff depending on what they do. So we're talking about this way, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know who owns that property. Okay. So we got two issues. One, the ball goes over there, can we access the property? Which would be a property rights issue. We'd have to get the local owner to say, hey, it's okay, I don't care, go get your ball. Or, but if he's there in the middle of the crops, would whoever's chasing that ball might destroy how much of the crop is the whole thing of balls will cost. What about a roll out in that? I do, I do think, uh, it, well, it depends on what kind of um, farming they're doing there, but I would kind of be willing to bet the farmer would rather just have the ball out of the field. I would agree. Um, let's make let's develop a list of questions like this because these are things the committee never even thought about. That I've never heard of some of these items you guys are bringing it up. It's great to get all these minds involved in this. Um, Another thing I noticed about that field, Sean, it's a row crop field and it's still gravity irrigated. It was not sprinkled. And so another thought is you get out there and tromp around, you're knocking all the corrugates out. And that, that affects irrigation as well as destroying the plants. So, but we certainly ought to be asking these questions of the committee. Because the thought is if we do get access to it, we've got to put a gate in it or we've got to get a ladder to go over it, you know, some walkway. I don't know. I think there was. I thought there was barbed wire on top of it. Mm -hmm. I don't think. You I can't remember. I don't think you can do a ladder. Did anybody take a picture of it? But for kids in that age group, I don't. I don't see. I don't see it going too far past that. I don't think we sell easily. You know that orange strong what mesh it's up. Put it on two sticks, roll it up, so you come out and you stake it, you know, you stick it in the bar in the fence behind as far as wherever the dug up doesn't go. Down so many feet. So if it does, it'll hit that, you know, so you stake it up and pull it out, roll it up and leave it there. Yeah. There's a just put a temporary like it's a like a temporary net there on your plant if you don't. You know, there are times I wish I had a better phone. <laughs> <laughs> because all of these elements of I put on other fields um, to handle most of them. And I think you brought up a valid point, John. We're dealing with 12 year olds. How far can they foul a ball? Because we've got pretty good distance from right here where it occurs to here. Can a 12 year old boy or girl hit it that far when they don't hit it direct? Maybe it's a non-issue. I think it's something we want to address. I can't really think of anything else. Anybody else got something? Now on the electric, one thing I do want to point out, um, I think we brought that up here. Electric, <clears throat> we're gonna run to the equipment shed. So that's gonna be their plug-in for pitching machines and stuff like that. They don't wanna put lights on here. Um, the principal did want security lighting inside the dugouts. Now, if that's the case, then they need wire running to this guy also. But that issue is not really figured out yet. No, it's security lighting so that when the police drive by and check the property, there's not a bunch of kids smoking dope in the dugout or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, or whatever nefarious things okay. people will do with a little hidden environment there. Whatever they can get away with. Pretty much. <laughs> and if you don't believe that, wait till you have children. <laughs> so that's another issue that we want to clarify. I'm going to put on lighting security because it's not for playing the games. 
it's just so those spaces are eliminated and somebody can visually check them without going to them. <coughs> Anything else, sir? So who's paying the power bill if that's going to be on all the time? See? Uh, it would ultimately it'd be us taxpayers that are in that district because it's the school, right? Mm -hmm. Does your solar cells have batteries? I'm going to guess what's going on. Yeah, do they go solar for something solar like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Might save us some money, actually. They do need 120 power in this, but for security lighting, can we do it with solar lights? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can. Where do they need the 120 power? To the shed right here. That's built into the dugout. All right, where are you going to get all this information? Um, let's open the PDF that is labeled floor plan. I'm proud to say that CSI Drafting Group has installed probably 80% of the dugouts in the Magic Valley over the course of the last 20 years. This is a typical design that we use okay, that a drafting club came up with probably 15 years ago when we did our first one, which went out to the Valley School District on their parks. Now all these, all these dugouts are out on that park. Now what they're doing on this is they're changing a couple things on it. So what I'd like you to do is redraw this. Because okay. you're going to need this plan. So this one shows in here the floor plan of the dugout and the storage shed. This has been agreed upon by the committee. Now what they're do they are changing is that this one has a little apron on it and it was originally designed, this line coming through here was that this dugout actually drops in. Now this is the one that's used at most of the high schools around here. If you look at Twin Falls, okay, we did all the design for those, all their Twin Falls parks, um, the Filer parks, Kimberly Parks, all of them came from this design. Uh, depending on how much money they want to spend, sometimes we drop the floor of them so that seating can see over the top of them. So they're, if you've ever been to a major league ball field, all their dugouts are set down so they can get more fans to see. This one, they want to go flat floor. So these are identical. The closest ones I see to this is if you go to Twin Falls High School and also Canyon Ridge. They all use this exact same design. They went with a flat floor though, okay, not a dropped floor. This front apron right here has been removed. Okay, so in essence, the fencing goes right across the front, as opposed to, you can see this one's pushed out to the lower two feet. It's CMU construction. CMU stands for Concrete Masonry Unit. In layman's terms, it's a cinder block. Okay. Well, can we all visualize a cinder block? The size they're going to use is listed right here. Good construction for these are basically indestructible without tools. So that gives you the width. There's no coverings on them. Okay. So when it comes in here and it says your CMU is 8 by 8 by 16, what that means is what you're seeing here is 8 wide, 16 long for each one, and then it's 8 foot high, or 8 inches, excuse me. Yeah, all yeah, well, that's inches. That's where your sizes come from. The visitor dugout will be this thing through this exterior wall. The home dugout will have the storage shed added onto it. In essence, I think you can pretty much just replicate this drawing. Here you see the elevation. So in essence, we're going to have a couple 4x4 four four posts. There's a Versalam beam that runs across the top of it to carry the roof. And everything else sits on top of the CMU. So there's your dimensions. This is, the, this is the ones I staked out in the field. 
minus that front apron. If you go to the section view on this, this will give you the depth. You do not need the equipment boxes. I don't think these are going to be put in. They kind of felt where this is a public place. Those would probably just be destroyed. But the section will give you the height. We're going to go six foot eight in the back. That gives us enough height. Nobody's going to bump their heads. And then it has a, I think it's a 412 slope. It's not set, set on there, but it's got the two heights. And that gives you the slope. But I think those heights were based on a 412 slope. So this shows a flat floor, doesn't it? Yes, I altered this one a little bit. Okay. Now the big thing here on this, the only real change I want you to be aware of, this little footing you see here with one piece of rebar in it, it's not continuous. Okay, that only has to be under the walls. But this post right here, that needs a one foot, one foot square footing underneath. And we go back to the previous one. So in essence, really all you have to do on that, if we, we're going to We've probably really got a footing that sits underneath it like that. Okay. Now, I don't know that we're going to go that route because they're being poured right now. Okay. If they're not already poured. So do you want us to draw it like it is or draw it like... I want you to replicate this one. Okay. That's going to go with your drawing set. This should be low priority. We've got to do the site plan first because we're going to have to survey and state that on Monday. Okay, so we're going to have to meet on this on Friday, get our act together, know what we're going to do on Monday. That's only two days away. Now, how do you get the dimensions for the field? If you would, jump into the internet and type in now let's see, I found it on the top link this morning, let's see, about youth softball field dimensions. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Um, This sports know-how is the one that I use, and I've con converted this from several others. I also went into here and found it. I've also looked up pony leagues for boy leagues, and they're all they're all the same. So I kind of trust this information. I've looked at four different sources, and they all gave me the same information. So this is probably a good link for you to draw your softball field. So here's your home plate, batter's boxes, catcher's box right here. Dimensions for your equipment, your plates. Um, notice how the field's laid out. It has a flat mound. So this is the inside. And notice they come here and say 200 feet minimum to the fence. That's recommended. We're not going to be all of that most of the way. Now there is one change to this. Um, by the way, you can print this. Let me go back. I just accidentally clicked into something. Come on. Okay. It's, there is one change. This is... This one's for a high school field. Notice it said the pitcher's mound is 43 feet. Mm -hmm. It's 38 feet for youth. Pony league and 12 and under softball. It's 38 feet. You can print this, by the way, if you wish. But here's all the dimensions you need to draw that field. So when 
I show you this drawing here, where did all this stuff come from? All those dimensions. Now, what I would like you to try and do is we can measure. I, I basically laid this, the dugouts out here, so this is already done. Come off this fence this far. That's going to give you one line. Come off the property line this far. That's going to give you the other one. And that's going to place your field for you. Does anybody have this drawing sitting in front of them? I do. Okay. It's 15.88 when I laid this out, and 16 feet. Um, I'm going to have to relook at my notes. I think I went. I want to. Memory tells me I went 26 feet on that, but I, I boy, my memory is thinking like, where are my car keys? Um, that would be a, <laughs> I better recheck my notes. Now it's from here. I'll recheck my notes and give you that number for sure. All right, so that's where your information is going to come from. You've got the dugout drawings that um, you can use for the dimensions right now. Eventually, you will want to start drawing those. The site plan. As a general, what we'll do here on your site plan, figure you're going to a D sheet with that. We don't know the scale of it yet, but I figure you'll be somewhere around 1 to 10, 1 to 10 feet, maybe 1 to 20 feet. Pretty much done at this point. Anything else you can think of right now? Okay, who is on individual teams here? So we had and one. And one. So that's one team. Okay. I thought it was me. It was I thought Juan was kind of ended up being a floater. Floater, there. yeah. <laughs> he will take one though. Yeah, we'll take one. Okay, so you four are one team. What's the other team? Okay, so we've got kind of two teams here. Missy, you're with these gentlemen. Mm -hmm. God, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, tell you what, let's get this front team first, and let's go pop open this machine. Oh, tell you what, before we do that, we've got to do one more thing. We've been going in an hour, and let's take a quick break, come back. We've got to analyze the data set first. Yeah. And then I'll grab the teams and show you what we need to do. Okay.